Greetings, and welcome to your Friday edition of RuneScape Weekly. Majebit here, joining me today is Parnassius and the RR Man. Let me go ahead and unmute myself here. Ah, I didn't really do my hair today, sorry. It's kind of a mess. Ah, whatever. I kind of forgot I had a camera. <laughs> uh, how you doing? How's everybody doing? I am not too bad at all. I'm doing the Iron Man today for the uh, for the background. We're doing some fishing, so that's my plan for the background. Well, you should be. Uh, no, you're Iron Man. So anyway, artisan has just started so cooking construction crafting fire making fletching herb law rune crafting and smithing will all give you 1.5 percent bonus xp at the moment cool Very i probably should head down and do some smithing but i can't be bothered fair i would <laughs> i'm just not bothering with this on my main obviously it doesn't matter for my iron man i would assume no Cool. No, Iron Man, uh, don't get the bonus XP. Right on. Anyway, uh, I assume we're ready to just pop into the show here. I can just load it up. Uh, and I'll go right into it as long as nobody has any breaking news, last minute adjustments to the notes that I need to know about. Not I. All right. No, uh, no. Uh, other than the beautiful face of Mage, but oh, that goodness. we're looking at right now. <laughs> Let me go ahead and. Uh, Quickly fire open our good old fashioned intro. All right. <clears throat> yeah, that is how you do it, but. Yeah, okay. that's how you start it. Hey, that's. <clears throat> All right. You gotta, you gotta really get that stuff going. All right. I think, yeah, I think we got the, uh, the song ready. I think we are. <laughs> the think... song. It's. Well, what would you call it? What would you call it? It's the theme. Music, it's the right? melody. Yeah, the melody. All right, I think it's. I think we're ready. I got the tune loaded up in the track player. Uh, do you want me to do the background noise? The tune. I have the tune ready to play. Uh, yes. Would you? Would you? Someone provide me the percussion. And, yeah. Uh, and. Uh, the... No. Let's. Uh, mute the Iron Man before we do this. Probably a good idea. <laughs> All right. All right, let's bro. Okay, <clears throat> let's do this one take. I'm ready to do this. <sighs> okay, three, two, one. You're listening to RuneScape Weekly for May 10th, 2019. I'm your host, Majevit, with over 18 years of RuneScape experience. Joining me today is Pernasius and the RR Man. And on today's show, Month May Ahead, TLDW number 432, Clan Quality of Life, Song of Saren, Hunter Modernization Blog, The Skiller's Delight, Suspicious Emails, Game Breaking Feature, how to induce mass cardiac infarction, condensed servers, stopping bots the easy way, the infinity microtransaction, and speaking for banned silent masses. Thank you for tuning into this edition of RuneScape Weekly, and enjoy the show. Welcome back to your Friday edition of RuneScape Weekly. Majebit here. We've got Pranasius, we've got the RR man. It's going to be a good show. I'm excited. I hope you are too. Because this is May, which is, you know, one month before June. I just looked at my right hand that does not have a watch on it because I'm dumb. But my watch is over here on my left hand. Uh, that means, yeah, that's right. We are only 10 days away, roughly. I think it's the 20th. It could be like the 22nd or so, but whatever. Um, from the 10 year anniversary of RuneScape Weekly. That is, that's exciting. That's an exciting event. Um, I, I think we're gonna plan for uh, our, our, an anniversary show sometime during the summer so we can organize uh, all the uh, the hosts 
together for for some sort of big thing. But um, I would like to do a large stream on the actual anniversary day. So um, let me just figure that out. What is, that's like May 20th. Yeah, well, give us the exact day, Mage. But so yeah, I was like, know. I think it's the 20th. <laughs> I think it's the yeah, 20th. It's between August and... <laughs> it's sometime in Sometime May. this <laughs> summer. No. Um, <laughs> I believe... Um, I think it's May 20th. But it could be, but it I could, think. But it could be May 25th. No, here's the thing. I, I have the MP3 file that is literally dated, and I just didn't do the I didn't do the research before the show. Um, yeah. So I can look at it and figure it out, and I'll have it. I'll have that information for the next show, or I can tweet it out, or I can probably before probably before the next show. <laughs> yeah, I can I can probably figure it out before the next show, or I can figure it out during the show while Parnassus is reading one of the articles or something. I can like, yeah, no, <laughs> um, let me know. I'll take, I'll take a day off work because this is a long show. We need to do well if you're yeah, if you're in Patreon. There's a there's um there's a special post inside of Patreon that I believe any patron can can access that lists all of the ten year anniversary shows at the one dollar mark. Giving this yeah. information away for free, um, and right there is the first episode of RuneScape Weekly. So if you go and listen to the first episode of RuneScape Weekly, the date is right there. It will tell you uh, the date. So if you want to uh, figure it out, reverse spoiler alert. If you want to, <laughs> yeah, if you want to uh, reverse engineer the first episode of RuneScape Weekly, it's right there on Patreon.com/RuneScape. Um, I just don't know it off the top of my head. And I'm an idiot because I should have known this going into the show. <laughs> Considering I wanted to, to uh, <laughs> probably something we yeah, <laughs> <should've>, uh, <laughs> probably <laughs> something we sort of sorted out in the pre-show. But you know, <laughs> considering the pre-show was just us rambling about absolutely nothing, although it was really interesting. It was like probably one of our most fun pre-shows we've ever done. It was really interesting <laughs> um it got real it got really people, weird people will see what, how much of a sociopath i really am yeah <laughs> it got really weird uh, i have to say it <clears throat> if you ever wanted to see what a podcast would be like between the rr man parnassius and i that has nothing to do about anything if you just let us talk for an hour and gave us <laughs> no particular subject matter and just said like hey use google and just go for it. Um, that's what would happen, I think. Because that's what happened, I, I'm pretty sure. Because uh, I just went off on a tangent. I don't know why. I don't know why that happened, really. But it yeah. did. Are you, are you saying it, started, it started with... It, it did actually start with a RuneScape topic, though. It was someone doing yeah. the uh, the glove of... Uh, oh, that's right. It was, yeah. Oh, so it was Blackwing's fault. The, Desti the Destiny Glove, yeah. So it's Blackwing Swamp. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so it was an interesting... That that spun the pre-show off on like an hour long... I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> good pre-show, I think. Patreon.com slash RuneScape. If you want to support the show, you can uh, you can get... Um, for a dollar, you get pre-shows every, to every show that we do here. For only a dollar, they're generally about a good hour long. Sometimes two. Uh, if the R man's around. <laughs> sometimes more. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we got a, a good docket for you today. If you're interested in RuneScape specifically, don't worry. We got your back. Uh, let me bring my docket over to my main monitor here. <sighs> so, let's see. Uh, first up is, uh, I believe, in, uh, from the official website here, the month ahead May. Is that correct? Am I, am I correct in that yep. assumption? All right, cool. So uh, Just before we do, though, just uh, yes. as a, uh, do a PSAs? quick PSA. Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, yes, that's in my notes here, right? Let me bring up. Yes, we have. So we have the PSA free crowd surf uh, for the month, right? Yeah. Yep. All right. Yes. Uh, so the free Solomon's General Store item is the free crowd surf. Uh, if you are a member, so grab that if you haven't had a chance to do so, because you know it's free. All you got to do log in, and there you go. Free resting animation. Yeah. <laughs> I need to do that, actually. Anyway, month ahead, May. Uh, so, 
Should I play the video or should we just read it? We should read it, right? Yeah, the video is more of a visual type yeah, thing where they're yeah. just running around trying to confuse Shawnee. Yeah, okay. You know that thing where you've bought something an amazing, where you've bought someone an amazing present and you're dying to tell them, but you can't? That's kind of where we're at this month. There's a storm on the horizon in Gilinor, and we're bursting to spill the beans out. For the, but for the time being, you're going to have to put up with us being all coy and elusive. Sorry. What we can say is that May brings with it the start of big things, and also offers up the opportunity to grab some sneaky XP as the voice of Saren spreads across the entire game world. Let the saga commence. So this is interesting. Obviously, they, they have something under wraps here that they're keeping from us. Uh, this is the time of the year when players kind of disperse from the game. Uh, Constructional rework. Th that's, that's, a, that's a bold thing to say. <laughs> no, that's just what I wish. Yeah, I know, right? I would, that would be great. This, to me, almost... Was... Go ahead. <laughs> I was wondering when we're going to bring it up. Like, I... let's, let's, do it, let's do it right now. What does everyone think this is going to be? What? Oh, okay. Yeah, I, my, my let's, thought... Let's do it right at the top of the show. Let's do it. World event. I, I'm saying this has got to be some you sort quest-based world event. Yeah. All I right, think they've is... been working on some uh, graphical updates in some area, and I think we're going to get some nice new content to come along with uh, some graphical updates. All right. And I will, I will go for the uh, half-empty glass, and I'll say they're talking about the Hunter update. Wow. <laughs> I'm just no, saying because they told us about it. Hey, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> All funny. right, what do you reckon? I told you what I reckon. I I, I think it's going to be a quest-based world event. Uh, so you let's reckon? see here. It'd be interesting. I, I hope that's what I'm hoping here because it says here uh, it, uh, it's called Desperate Times. At least that's what they're they're quoting here for the, the what they are telling us about this. No, that's saga? a new quest that's coming. Oh, okay. That's a quest that's coming out. But it's the quest is tied to this, isn't it? No, no. The, the 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 quest is titled "Desperate Times." That is our new quest right, coming I'm, up. I'm reading into it too much. Fine. <laughs> I think I do. I do wonder. I do wonder. Mm -hmm. you know, I I see what you're saying, but I'm thinking because he says uh, <laughs> they say what we can say is that May brings with it these the, these things come along with it. And generally, updates are tied together. I don't know. Jagex tends to. To bundle their updates is all I'm saying. Okay. Updates oh, tend to be that. themed. I'll give you that. I'll say, okay, there'll be a, there is a quest, right? Yeah. Elder, Elder, Elder God's quest. Yes. But if <laughs> if that's the surprise, that's disappointing. So it should be there's an Elder God quest and then some massive update to go with it. Is yeah. that fair? That's yeah. yeah okay. Well, that's exactly. I mean, they've they've told us the quest is coming, so we know that there is. In addition to that, there is a secret update. Yes, world uh, events. We hope world yeah. events, and, and it could be it could be a world event, event for world event. For this. Yes, please. I I'm sort of calling. I'm calling because they have been talking a bit about uh, these graphical reworks that they have been doing. So I'm graphically hoping rework. What about a because... what about a world event that graphically reworks the world? Shit, yeah. I'm just yeah, trying well, to no, compromise. But, I'm sorry, guys. but I mean, because we're looking at that, El Elder Gods are in you know the uh, the Tsar region, which is very old. Karamja, there's one there, yeah. I believe. That's a, an old area. Yeah. Uh, I'm hoping that sort of you know they're going to tie that in. That that's just my yeah. thought, and again, probably wishful thinking. But, but hey, you bring up a valid idea, happens. right? They burst out of the ground. They've been sleeping for so long, and because of that destruction. It reworks the area, you know? Mm, like just, that's what I was sort of hoping. Yeah. That's an interesting kind of retcon to rework the area, almost. I, I kind of like that idea. And again, you can make a world event out of that because you have to, you know, pacify the Elder God. Or at the very least, you can make a quest out of it, I guess. But I'd rather see some sort of community mm. gathering around it. It doesn't have to be... You know, world-endingly consequential, but I just like seeing community events that gather around yeah. it. That would, you know, maybe I do. Last I, mean, I would, I would love than... a world event. <laughs> yeah, it's just something. There are people out there that didn't get to a taste of the first few, and I would like those players to have an opportunity to have it. And I myself like world events. I think it brings the community together, even if they complain a lot, but. It's fun to to have those big 
uh, community events that are over the yeah. long period of time. And I uh, hope that they've different. learned from previous ones that they can kind of try and, you know, tool to the, you know, you know, new mechanics. I don't know, whatever. I'll move along. Yeah, no, it's like they've, they've literally put their foot down. Like, they've mentioned the quest. The quest so that, that can't be, you know, the thing that's going to happen. They've put the, something big's happening. And yes. if it's if it's just a quest, that's going to be disappointing. It's going to so be it's bigger I'm, than a quest. It's bigger that's than what a I mean. Quest. So definitely bigger something's than a quest. Something's happening. So hey, it's a quest and more. I'm pumped and I'm hyped. Hopefully, I'm not overhyped. It's easy to do that in RuneScape. Desperate yeah. times. It all began with the death of a god. Before he passed, Guthix transferred some of his power to the player, creating the World Guardian, a powerful being with the power to resist the gods themselves. This event was the catalyst for the return of other gods who wished to claim the, this divine energy for themselves. After all the scheming, arguing, and fighting reached its conclusion, the player ended up facing face-to-face -face with Elder God Jass and was given an ultimatum. Prove that mortal life deserves to exist, or all mortal life will be destroyed. The Desperate Times quest is the bold next step in the epic Elder God storyline. It's also an ideal starting place for those yet to discover the magic of RuneScape's world. Players will be invited to attend Saren's Council to find a way of appeasing Elder Gods and saving all life on Gilinor. But don't expect things to be easy. The demands are large and the races of Gilinor are not united. And one individual has a very different proposal. Team up with Thok and Karapak to visit the Needle, solve strange puzzles, and discover key moments in RuneScape's recent history. Requirements. This new quest is the first in a brand new storyline that will change the face of Gilinor itself. Despite its epic status, Desperate Times is a relatively mid-level requiring only that players have completed two novice quests, You Are It and The Needle Skips, as well as having level 50 mining, smithing, and divination. Don't worry if you're not familiar with the story thus far. We've done all that uh, I'm sorry, we've done all that we can to make things welcoming to newcomers. To get started, simply speak to Saren in Berthorpe Castle from May 10th. There are many cool rewards, including XP lamps and clue scrolls, with more to come as the situation progresses. Song of Saren. So anyway, let's, let's first talk about May that. May 10th. That's pretty cool. Um yep. May Go Isn't ahead. it today? Today is the tenth. Yes. Oh, okay. peace out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See you later. So you can uh, you can talk to Saren in the castle starting today. Is that what I'm understanding? Yeah, she's just basically going to tell you a bit about it and talk about the uh, the, the the upcoming council. This is this is how they've tied in this Song of Saren weekend where we're getting this mm -hmm. extra XP. Uh, by yeah, it, it's it's basically because Saren has come out and yeah, go and talk to her if you want to. Hmm. Can't do that on this account. <clears throat> <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, is sorry. It, is it <laughs> noob Iron Man? <laughs> Let's see here. I'm just saying. Is this a? Is this a? Um, yeah. This sounds like a really good way of like getting new people and using the needle. The needle is like a time I've machine. I've seen sort of the man going on. use the needle. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. they actually might have something. They might have a good fucking point right here. The needle is sort of like a time machine. Yeah. This is, like, this is actually a good way to get it's people a time into machine the future you can... stuff. And you sort of go back and you can do the past quests at other points. They might have some. There might be someone pretty switched on doing this. This, this is could a be... really good way to get spaghettified in the code. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> For everyone, I have. Just, I haven't actually done this part of it yet, so I've just come up to Berthorpe. So I'll go through what we uh, what what they're on about here. Uh, and yeah. we the emissary of Seren is here and says, "My goddess Seren is holding a council of all gods and races." To draw attention to this momentous gathering for this weekend only, she has cast her voice out beyond Priftinus and all over the whole world. Uh, what is the council about? Lady Seren has become 
aware of a great threat which faces this world and wishes to address all of its most influential rulers. She has not revealed the nature of this threat to me. You should visit the council yourself. They can be found upstairs in the castle in Burthorpe. So, uh, castle in Burthorpe, I am going to assume is this one straight ahead of me. <laughs> and we'll run upstairs there. And Seren is up here. So it is the, the, the castle directly north, basically, of the Lodestone. Uh, Seren says, I'm afraid you're a bit early for the meeting. And that's it. <laughs> so you can talk to her from now, but you're too early. So the meeting obviously won't start until the quest comes in. So a bit anticlimactic, but there you go. Also, uh, while you did that, I was able to find the birthday of RuneScape Weekly. Also, uh, this episode has the proof that I said happy scaping before any of the RuneScape staff, um, which is why I treasure this episode so dearly. Uh, but <laughs> it is it is the 21st, so I was wrong. But I was close. Um, so that's, I think, a Tuesday or something, or a Monday? I just think it's a Tuesday. Hang on. Tuesday. Yep. Yeah. So that's a Tuesday. Um, so yeah, we... it looks like I'm taking the twenty second off work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to figure that out. Yeah, I'm gonna try to do. I'll try to do. Do I? I don't do anything on Tuesdays. Do I? Anything like in, in particular that I have to think of? I will double check my calendar. I know I don't have any. Weird ass doctor's appointments. So I'll just. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, and well, you I mean, won't. I'll tell you. I know. I will. They're doing something weird to me this month. I know. I'll tell you that right now. Um, I don't want to talk about it on stream. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those up situations. <laughs> it's one of those where like they're not putting me under, but I really wish they were putting me under situations. <laughs> oh, when are they doing it? It's it's called yeah. It's called a surgical procedure. I'll tell you that one. It's on the twenty first. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> oh, all right. That I, th I think that's I think that's what they call destiny. <laughs> <laughs> I like look at this shit. Like you can't make this up. I, I specifically opened up my well, he my you, health you, chart. Good. If you if you're thinking about it, really, we should just make the ten year show the Friday because yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. How how everything works, you know, you know, fucking uh, leap years and all that sort of shit. <laughs> Stop the f bombs. <laughs> Sorry, they're getting in trouble. This show is just not monetized anymore. It's all right. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> At this point, oh, man. Sorry. It's all good. <laughs> I'll, uh, uh, YouTube makes me no money. It, it doesn't matter. I uh, the only time the only money I make off of the show at this point is Patreon and Twitch. Uh, Fair enough. <laughs> Although someday YouTube will probably cut me a check after those, I get about two dollars a month uh, in the YouTube uh, from YouTube yeah. revenue. So someday that's going to add up to a hundred dollars. Well, when YouTube <laughs> finally figures out that they shouldn't shit on people, I can do the math. Two, money, two yeah. divided by a hundred. What's that? I can't do that <laughs> at the top of my head. It's probably, it's, I probably could. Hey, two every divided two by years. ten. That's so that's like that's every two years. Yeah, right. Every two <laughs> years. Thank you. Oh, that's funny. I've gotten one payout from YouTube already, so that's probably the last, the, the, the first and the last one I'll ever get. Um, anyway. <laughs> Enjoy that with your life. So, yeah, right. Um, I, I, I'm very grateful for Patreon. Um, and Twitch has honestly, honestly been, been pretty good as well. Um, as far as subscriptions, people, people actually support um, on Twitch. Although YouTube now has has the join button, but uh, I just I don't I don't uh, I don't stream on on YouTube very much anymore just because I got I got such a salty taste in my mouth you know. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, let's get back. Let me pull this back onto my main screen here and talk about the song of Saren. There is a threat, a threat which faces every one of us, the Elder Gods. I thought they were gonna say MTX. There are so they are so powerful. So far beyond us. What if? What if the elder gods are actually just like the VP board or something, like the, like the board of directors? Um, that even we, uh, we gods are nothing more than ants to them. We, uh, for the entire life forms on this planet, they have slept. Uh, but now they are waking up. 
How can I know this? Because I am their child. Saren is forming an army, and her song is an ideal opportunity for you to prepare for battle. Song of Saren is similar to Voice of Saren, except this time it, uh, the effects are not limited to uh, the, the part of Elf City. Players will have the chance to earn 1.5 times XP, Iron Man excluded, all weekend. It's a fantastic skilling boost ahead of the challenges that are to come. From May 10th to May 13th, the Song of Saren will call out across the entire game world. Each song will be uh, will herald a, f uh, a focus on a one. I'm sorry. Will focus on one of four sets of skills: support, combat, gathering, and artisan. Once called, players will have two hours to make the most of the extra XP in the activated skills. Then, after two hours, Saren's songs will change, and new skills will come into play. Here's what each set of skills will perk up for. So we have support, which includes agility, dungeoneering, slayer, and thieving, plus invention. No XP penalties for dying in dungeoneering. Uh, increased loot and chance of getting totems whilst safe cracking. And all slayer tasks act as if you have a VIP ticket. When combat is active, it includes attack, constitution, defense, magic, prayer, range, strength, and, uh, and summoning. Plus one to all charm drops. Decreased cost on instances. One auto resurrection to full health per elite dungeon. For gathering, includes divination, farming, fishing, hunter, mining, and woodcutting. 10% chance to not deplete uncharted island resources. Training hotspots in Hall of Memories does not remove... I'm <clears throat> sorry, does not move as often. 10% more beans from selling items in the player-owned farm. Artisan includes cooking, construction, crafting, fire making, fletching, herb lore, rune crafting, and smithing, which gives you a reduced chance of burning food. 2.5 chance to save a secondary when making potions. An increased node spawn and double rewards in the rune span. Simply log on anytime during the event and click on the Saren head to take part. <clears throat> so uh, that's the Song of Saren. Uh, then there's t uh, there's Time to Saren, which sounds like a ripoff of Time to Train, if you ask me. Hmm. Which is a uh, treasure hunter event that is also going on during this. And of course you have uh, your Aura Sail. That's still going on. And also, uh, once the dust has settled on the events of Desperate Times... They will be they uh, will be announcing what happens next, not least the big summer update of 2019. So if you want to find out what you will be playing over the next couple of months and how we got there, then this new quest is very much the place to start. And who knows, perhaps things will escalate before the announcement. We're now uh, we're signing off before we say anything more. Until next time, the RuneScape team. So definitely, this quest sounds like it's you know it's going to be the uh, the lead off into the summer yep. events. Which is why I'm sort of hoping for the gods coming out and redoing those areas, things like that. But the world event, I think, would also tie in nicely with that type of thing. Yeah, you can have a sort of a world event that uh, also incorporates sort of the you know graphical updates and things. So. I just, I, I did, uh, I, I want to give a, a shout out for the video they did where they had Mod Shawnee running around behind the scenes trying to get information and everyone sort of hiding it from him. And <laughs> yeah. and that little ode to that old video, uh, that old stream that he did where it wasn't his fault. The, uh, you know, the devs had left something on the streaming computer that shouldn't have been there. And when he switched out of one, it went over to it. So um it was it was amusing to hear that at the end <laughs> yeah i almost like that was not his fault at all and borderline conspiracy theory was put there on purpose to be found <laughs> yeah well macho he obviously didn't know about it with his uh, reaction <laughs> i don't know he didn't know about it but <laughs> I, 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 just, I, know. I just feel like the uppers like left it there for like him to just stumble upon and like virally get it leaked you know like I, i'm being a conspiracy tinfoil hat right now but i just like <laughs> you know come on that's just like yeah that's so irresponsible of the uppers you know this it's a public streaming computer you leave confidential 
highly sensitive images, it's your fault, not his. Anyway. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, uh, which obviously they knew because he has, you know, his jobs. If anything, the one who, the person who left it there, got fired, not him. <laughs> exactly. Uh, anyway, uh, next article up. Uh, if you could uh, read into this for me, I would be grateful, Pern. Yes, this is the TLDW 432, the month of head. Uh, now, the big question was, will the big summer update release be the new mobile in winter 2017? No, it's about 7 8 done, and we're very confident on that. So the big update is not mobile release. Aww. This year has taught us to be braver. Elite woodcutting outfit is imminent. Uh, yes. News on Stone Spirits will be coming out soon. Uh, and they don't feel confident on giving information on the Marjorat Aura at the moment. I am getting sick and tired of hearing about this Marjorat Aura. Right? It's got done. It's gone. It was there for a year. Shut the hell up People and move on. People want it so bad, though. <laughs> That's crazy, yeah. Like, We're looking at other ways of doing cutscenes. Did we say anything about something to do with the way cutscenes are done is a spoiler. And the Song of Seren full schedule will be posted soon, and that can now be found on the official forums. Mm. Uh, the Quest, uh, which is coming out on the 13th of May, so that will be this Monday. Uh, why are you talking that. to I'm me? glad it's coming out. Like I know it's not... That soon as we're already like halfway through May, practically as of next Monday. Yeah, it just feels that's it. It just feels like it's soon, probably because I'm yeah. playing Eve. Anyway, <laughs> okay. Uh, comes out 13th May. The the requirements, as I said, 15 div smithing, mining, and divination. You will also need the two quests, needle skips, and you are it. This is the first series, uh, first in a series of updates. It's not a big Grandmaster quest. Uh, it's only a part one. It's like uh, chapter one of a book, somewhere between RFD and uh, Ritual of Marjorat on scale, That's but so it feels awesome. quite substantial. Just hearing that it's somewhere uh, between those two quests, like that yeah. just hits the sweet spot for me. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. Oh, the the best, next big thing is part best, two. Uh, Go ahead, sorry. Sorry, man. I was just going to say the best part is that they're, they're starting quest series, which requires previous quests. Good way to go. These And the quests that they're using to start the quests are not too difficult. Six-age quests. Like, yeah, yeah. Exactly, and they're great quests. And they're the easy quests. Skips, you've got to do that. That needle skips, mm, that is a oh, good quest. That was it a, is a good quest. quest yeah. And if, if here's I, a, I'm not a quester. It's great. Yeah, it's that's a quest for people who don't like quests. Exactly. Um, the Iron Man. Yeah, that's a, that is another quest that I should that I need to do on this Iron Man that I think uh, Sushi would be interested in seeing. Yeah, it's so good. Um, uh, uh, next time Sushi's watching one of my streams, I will do a I will do um, murder right, mystery. That, like before we move on, that is yeah. a, that's a bigger deal than you think. The fact that they are not just starting the new quest series. You know, as an a new a new player can just jump in and do the quest. The fact that they're actually making you have to do a couple of the quests before you start this, that's bigger than you think it is. That's a, that's that's good. That is a good fact. Yeah. And they picked two quests that I think aren't going to barrier to entry people who yeah, are super exactly. anti quest. Um, yeah. but again, people who are super anti quest probably aren't going to be interested in this quest series anyway, because the, I'm going to guess the rewards to this quest aren't going to be very heavy. It's going to be mostly lore based rewards and I'm fully okay with that. Good. Yeah. And that's exactly right. I mean, it is, it is the entry point of, uh, yes. of a new quest series. So not grandmaster. Yeah. Uh, again, I mean, I, I, I really of xp rewards uh, as quest rewards yeah. i do prefer it doesn't have to be a great uh, yeah a, a big item but just something more than just the xp drops i think we get too many xp drops in the game but anyway that is what it is indeed anyway the next big thing is part two coming in summer which will be the big summer update the aim is to be a bit more strategic slash episodic have things 
tying stuff together, characters repeating themes in every piece of content, not just quests. We have places we want to go and we're excited about it. We're going to announce it in a fabulous way. Now, this quest is set canonically after Sliske's Endgame. Uh, so Sliske's Endgame is, requ- is recommended, but obviously not required. Mm-hmm. Uh, we try to cover as much as we can with the way we've written it, throwbacks, cutscenes, referenced a lot of different things, etc. Glad it's not required. There's enough for people. Yeah, that's right. But And again, I hope they do... Uh, yeah, like some of the quests I do, well, you don't have to do this, but if you do, you know, there's a little extra reward for you. I like it when they do things like that for people too, to just try and get people into playing those sort of, you know, quality uh, quests that we sort of had in there. Uh, anyway, uh, there's enough for people who haven't done it to get a good understanding. Those that have done it, uh, there's a good chunk more for you as well. It's partially voice acted in cut scene, in key cutscenes and parts of the quest. Being pragmatic about it, the quest features a lot of characters and would have cut into development time voicing them all. Uh, there are some puzzle elements in the quest. One of them is a is procedurally generator uh, mod Orion. Every time I make a procedurally generated content, we get better at it. Uh, the rewards are going to look at the uh, crew scroll reward container. So obviously, uh, there's going to be a container for all your clue scroll rewards. Uh, it can store up to max, max stack of each clue scroll and caskets. Uh, the That's soft cap mean. of clues is not going to be removed. Uh, picking up a clue scroll automatically goes into the container if carried. Completing a clue will store the casket straight into the container if desired, and having to have to withdraw a clue to start it. There will be XP lamps and one master clue scroll. <coughs> so they are your rewards. So again, chunk of XP, a master clue scroll, uh, and this clue scroll container, which sounds really interesting. See, that's the type of thing I like. Mm. Not game breaking, but something just nice. You know, nice little reward for doing the quest. I do like the sound of that one. Uh, anyway, moving on. Did anyone else have anything to say about that? No, I mean, I, I think that the rewards are on par. I'm, I mean, mm. it, as far as the the actual clue scroll box goes, as far as like, does that increase the amount of clue scrolls you can hold even more? No, it just means you rather than hold having four spaces in your bank plus the uh, caskets, they all it's one space. So essentially, you can okay, save eight spaces. spaces. Okay, yes. Yeah, so I wonder if you, I I hope you can store your uh, clue scroll outfit in there too. That would be interesting. Yeah, anything, anything that saves that, bank yeah. space, that's a that's exactly a, that's a, <laughs> that is a freaking yeah. yep. That is a that's a good reward. reward. Yep. Yeah. Sure. Exactly. Also, I'll yep. do the quest. Yeah, any quest that gives you bank space, that's a true quest yep. right there. <laughs> exactly. All right. Okay, yes. Elite Dungeons Quality of Life. We aren't purposely delaying Mod Orion's Quality of Life fixes. The release's candidate schedule, RC, has been really busy lately, and Orion keeps adding one more fix every time. <laughs> and Elite Dungeon reward shops are now merged into one. Players can now unlock a bank chest upgrade for 750,000 tokens, which allows banking inside Elite Dungeons and automatically grants the 20% double loot chance on bosses. They can still be toggled for non-boss drops. Players can teleport between Elite Dungeons using the chests outside each dungeon if they have completed the Impressing the Locals quest. Invention combat dummies can now be placed within a short distance and inside of any dungeon chest inside Elite Dungeons. Celestial and Gemstone Dragons inside ED2 have had their defense slightly reduced. uh, Dungeoneering Daily Challenge can now be completed by a perfect Shifting Tombs run or an Elite Dungeon. Loot messages now more obviously denote whether an item has been stockpiled in your elite dungeon chest or not. Fix the minor issue with achievement progress spam when halfway through the griefing the reef achievement. Spiky rune salvage drops are now noted. And corrected some string localizations and added delimiters on large quantity drops from Lucky Charms. Cool patch notes. So these are the quality of lights that are coming out that have been delayed again. 
Got some, huh? yeah, that was a cool patch notes. Thank you. Uh, I got some Hunter modernizations here, too. Do you want me to give you a break now? Or do you want to get Yeah, you can take on those ones. Cool. I got some Hunter modernizations coming at you, a.k.a. skilling integrity, I, I guess you'd call this, um, an RS3 edition, maybe. Uh, this has got a July release. Uh, this is not the big summer update in bold, it says here. <laughs> <laughs> Bla- this, this has been done by the Black Ops team. Last released Christmas and Violet is Blue. And they, they've they been working on this project uh, since then, and it's, this has been uh, pretty much what they've been working on. It's a good opportunity to look at Hunter as a skill as well. Uh, we'll we will be reading a blog about it in a bit. Uh, right now, there's only two viable methods, Crystal Chins and Tortles. Both are box trapping. After the update, there will be eight or nine viable methods plus a new method. Uh, so Elite Hunter Outfit will be made available through gameplay. Same fragment method as the others. Chance of auto-deploy and pick up traps from Volcanic Trapper. Outfit increased from 10 to 30%. Trapper, that is awesome. Yeah. Trapper <laughs> Outfit Success Chance Bonus works on all creatures now as well. Hunter Skill Cape Perk will also be reworked as well. Crystallize is also getting a buff. Has been an issue since release. Mining changes, so we're changing for Hunter now, too. It can be cast on empty box traps instead of full ones. For 30 seconds, creatures that enter the trap successfully will be caught and freed automatically, granting XP, but no resources. Crystallize works on ferrets, polar cabot, grenwalls, and pawa. Cobalt, viridian, azure, crimson, gray, red chins, but no crystal. Yeah, it'd be kind of weird if the crystal has worked on crystal. But, hey, I mean, that sounds like a way better formula than before. So they just, Hmm. they go in, they go, oh, you get your XP, you don't get the items. That makes sense. Um, But does that become AFK then? You don't have to collect the traps. You're just sitting there activating the spell over and over again, right? Every 30 seconds, yeah. Yeah. Like, that just, that's not, that's not bad. And then, obviously, no. setting the trap back up when it falls over. Which, you'll we'll, we'll be getting some more information about that in a bit. Tick mo- n- 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 manipulation has been removed. <laughs> Was a bug, like continuous four tick auto attack. Is a bug in Hunter, but most instances, tick manip is not a bug. To compensate, Ely Hunter outfit will have an increased chance of instantly deploying or picking up traps. Ornate Tortles and chin, uh, Crystal Chins are too high XP per hour, so we're nerfing them. The jump in the late 90s is too high. Skill Chinchampas no longer grant XP when catching multiple. Uh, we'll be buffing the XP rates of other methods based on intensity and value. Uh, the buffs and boosts of the enhanced Yaktui Stick, XP lowered from 5% to 2%. Oh, That was a lot of work, man. I know, that took me ages to get that for that 5% boost. Chance of extra sprites increased from 5% to 20%. Nobody cares about the sprites! Can, exactly. <laughs> can now be worn while barehanded catching butterflies. Although, if, they're bringing, if they are bringing the, uh, the outfit in to gain in-game now, there's going to be a lot more people with it. So I can sort of understand... The Yaktui stick going from five to two because otherwise, you know, you've got an eleven percent boost mm. on a skill that sort of no, nothing else has that. So yeah, okay. it'll make it an eight percent boost. So it's still eight percent boost. Yeah, the extra two yeah. percent is still going to be nice. That's fair. That's fair. You Not liked, up. but understandable. Yeah, no, you bring up a valid point. I didn't yeah. think I didn't think about it that way. Um, yeah, I mean. <laughs> I, I love the extra XP, but I mean, I do think XP is too fast in this game. And Hunter was yes. one of those that was way well, too fast. And Hunter, it was farming and smithing, us uh, farmer, farming and thieving being the other two. Hunter that I think are, are is fast in its now. current state an unbearable skill to train, but they are changing. Yeah. it. they are fixing it exactly. So yeah. I can't say that I, I can't say that they're that is going to be the case, and yell about this you know devalued yaktui stick because i haven't seen the new mechanics and all the new skills you know uh, and all the new training methods anyway butterflies barehanded butterfly hunting being altered to become more afk friendly and better xp uh which again makes sense because now you'll be able to use your yaktui stick with barehanded catching uh, of butterflies so that two percent um bonus will be able to be applied 
while catching butterflies, whereas before that 5% bonus was not able to be applied because you needed a butterfly net, I believe, or some bullshit. Yep. Anyway, continuing on. Barehanded butterfly hunting being altered to become more AFK hunting and better XP will be, be the main AFK method. No longer removed from the map when being caught, players will attempt to catch the same butterfly multiple times if barehanded catching. So again... So basically, rather than just catching one and then having to find another one... Yep. Similar to what they've done with pickpocketing elves and things, where you just sort of do multiple pickpocketing, yep. you're going to be catching sort of multiple, getting multiple XP off that same butterfly. This is also going to make those ones in the wilderness probably the best XP choice yes. in game. Take people back out there. Yep. So the demonic skull yep. is going to be your best choice, although it's going to put the risk involved. And because you really can't negate the option of risk you know that's going to be open <laughs> open uh killing on those people who want to train out there that's going to be hilarious um but yeah that, that's an interesting um thought and again that's why people don't want the downsides of game worlds anyway agility uh, level will now affect success chance around four percent at level and nine one. yes and agility is slowly like creeping its way in good yeah, I was going to say, I like how they've been sort of bringing agility in as a true support skill, where it is, if you have the higher your agility level, the, the better you have chances in a lot of these other skills in, in doing things. I love the way they are doing that with agility. Yeah, for sure. Agility has been um, slowly kind of coming into its own as an actual support skill. It's almost been slowly becoming worth the torment of training it um i i kind of you know like my 120 agility cape more and more salamanders <laughs> new high level yellow salamanders use the regular method but will be released when caught giving xp but no items so it isn't a new weapon mid 80s level requirement Increased Salamander Tree Clickbox as well. Now a release all option as well as... I almost said as well as well. Nice. More black Salamanders and Net Trap Hotspots added to the wilderness to help you too. Now, um, I was originally going to, like, panic at 120 uh, Hunter, but mm -mm, I think this sounds great. Well, the more AFK method is going to be fantastic because yeah. it is a very click intensive uh, skill. And yeah, you can get upwards of, you know, one and a half uh, to 1.9 mil XP an hour, which is, which is just ridiculous. But it is, it is, it is not fun gameplay. Whereas doing this, you know, you got that sort of semi AFK, you've got a, a range of different methods. I, I really like that because I mean, I, I like training, training at Crystal Chins. Uh, you know, doing my big chin chomper and things like that. But this will give you, okay, I'm getting sick of crystal chins. I'm going to go do some butterflies for a while because my hands are getting tired. I just want to kick back and watch TV a bit, click on the butterfly, you know, watch your Netflix, click on another butterfly and, and that type of thing. So I do like what they're doing here. Yes, it's going to be lower XP per hour, but it's going to be more sustainable to do for longer periods of time. For sure. <clears throat> Finally, the biggie. There will be a brand new hunter method entering the game, completely changing the way you hunt if you choose to use it, adding a brand new and exciting mechanic. Due to its intensity, uh, it will have a drop table like PVM. It will roll on the table with new rare uniques on the table. That's all we're getting I for now. I love that too. Yeah, that yep. sounds really cool. Tra so again, a high intensity, yeah, uh, high high uh, GP method of, of hunter, which is you know which is what we've been asking for in all skills, yep. and this is the next one in that in that skilling update. So congrats, Jagex. Yeah, and this is with an actual drop. To, like wow, I'm so glad I, I did not um, get 120 hunter uh, with <laughs> with that two tick. Oh my gosh, I, I almost did. I, and I bailed on it like three times because it was just, I even got the enhanced stick. I was so ready to do it because of the XP rates. It was so quick. I was like, I can have this mm. done in a week. And then I was like, this is painful. No, forget this. They're going to rework this skill. I know they are. And look at it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Traps. Two traps can be used from level one. Three traps can be used from level 30. Four and five traps stay at level 60 and 80. That's not a change. Uh, increased the maximum possible number of skill chompers per trap from four to six. 
players now walk on top of shaking traps before picking them up. Fall, Much better. Yeah. Fallen traps now have a left click lay option instead of take. Oh, thank you. Another good one. Yes. yes. <laughs> that is going to save. How time. many times do you have to right click then? You know, it's it's yeah. just I lo- th- those those are two very big updates that they're doing there alone for box traps. Yeah. Herbal or habitat. Uh, players will no longer freeze points when hunting. Judinkos now pass through players, gaining a seed no longer interrupts the player. Juju Thank Hunter, God. yeah. <laughs> Juju Hunter potions can now stack up to thirty minutes, thirty-six minutes with incense sticks. I forgot about those. You are now warned when adding a juju a dose to a Juju Hunter potion when you are close to the time cap. Southern region has now had some foliage removed, and Judinko spawns moved to make Hunter uh, their rival. Mm. The northern section. Thank you. Wilted, uh, wilted plants now have a left-click rebuild option. The check option when a trap is in the middle of a catching something has been removed as it didn't do anything and just led to frustration and confusion. The option will now only appear when the trap is ready to check. Thank that you. <laughs> added a small stock of juju herbs, seeds to pop a mambo's uh, shop. Two of each per day cost 10k each. Increased the herb seed drop rates and in ineligible Jadinkos despawn quicker. Falconries even had a change. Four more dashing Kebit spawns. All spawns have been rearranged to make them better to catch. Increased their click bot range, ranges as well. And the big, cha- uh, the big shin will remain unchanged. They'll look at the XP rates and quality of life at some point. People may say not to rework agility or construction, but those would be, uh, need a full rework, including how you train the skill. Those two are the ones that, that need the most, but their scope is also bigger. Yep. So that's that. Which is fair enough. They, they are they are super large updates. Yeah, those are like extra large, like uh, yeah. actual skill updates. Hmm. Like mining and smithing style. Anyway, there you go. Here, I, I love this. First uh, first comment is, Enhanced Jack Twee Switch, uh, XP boost lowered from 5% to 2%. Given the absolute grind to get it, a tiny 2% boost feels stingy. You can get a 3% boost just for joining a clan and visiting the Citadel once a week and clicking on a stone, never participating at all. Uh, but hours upon hours of mad clicking on charms, F you, you only get 2%. I, he wants the 5%. I, as I said before... When you add it up, I mean, you've got your your outfit, which already gives six percent. That's coming into game. The two percent, which will up it to eight percent, I think is is more than enough uh, there. Uh, you know, and you know, three percent boost off the joining clan. Well, you can get six percent if you sort of spend twenty minutes there and get that as well. The hours and hours of mad clicking on charms. Um. I would say it's probably about three or four hours to get the thousand. It uh, it was a while, but it wasn't it wasn't superbly bad. Hmm. Yeah, it took me probably like three three four hours. Hmm. It wasn't fun, but it's permanent. Yep. So you know, I don't know. I I, I think I think that the the overall nerf is justified. I understand yep. the frustration, but I don't think it's a big deal. Anyway, we got speaking of clan, we got some clan quality of life. Would you like to jump in and talk about some clan quality of life uh, for us? Yes, the clan quality of life improvements. Clans of RuneScape, behold, the prophesied quality of life changes have finally arrived. As of this week, clans will have more fun than ever before so there's no better time to jump into clan life make friends and slaughter your enemies enjoy here's the full list of changes a special broadcast will fire to your clan every three months during your first year and then again on your clan anniversary every year after that saying clan boy is approaching their 11 year anniversary uh discord and invention have been added to the list of clan keywords RuneScape 2007 has been renamed to Old School RuneScape in the clan keywords. When viewing a clan's notice board, the title will now be the name of the clan. 
I like they have scape and chill as the clan they've got there. They should have used our clan. Our yeah. clan. <laughs> it's one of the most popular clans in the game, I think. Is it? No, okay. Uh, the clan, uh, sorry, entries in the place drop down menu now default to abandoned mine so that the clan notice board can be al alphabetized. The clan info interface has been refreshed and a clan's creation date added. So we can now see what when your actual clan was made. The Vexelium option has been removed from the notice board edit interface. Clan event reminder notifications have been updated to include more information about the upcoming events and an event notification message will fire when an event has been running for 30 minutes. You are now able to view the job title of a clan member by hovering over their rank icon in the clan chat. The clan log will be updated to show last week's visitor and capped count for the ladder to work your clan citizen must have been re rebuilt since this update. Uh, clans can set a total level requirement for joining their clan. If a player is invited who doesn't match the clan's requirement, they will not be able to join. If a clan owner invites a player though, they will be able to bypass this check. Clan chat has also been improved. You can now view the information of the clan you're guesting in by clicking the I button. You can also view that the clan's notice board and see what events they have coming up. Uh, when guesting in a clan, you will receive notifications to let you know when their events are starting. Clan staff can set up a guest clan pin that will stop uninvited guests from entering the clan. If the pin is changed, any guests reconnecting to the clan chat will be kicked out and will have to re-enter the right pin number to rejoin. Clans will also be able to set a total level requirement for guests to join their clan in chat settings. This is to stop new accounts being made to flame clan chats. And I do like that one because I know there are a lot out there where you have sort of people coming in and spamming. Yep. Uh, so that is a that is a really good one. Having you know, you can set it at 250 or something to stop people just coming in and you know and annoying your clan members and, and doing stupid things there. Or making fake accounts to uh, with with very similar names to other players to try and scam you for money. Right. Yeah, that's happened before in our clan. Actually, if someone changed. It has. Yeah, we had a couple name. of those. Yeah. Yep. It's actually worked. Uh, yep. And that is basically it on a lot. That was last week's update. So where they just talk about the time of Seren yes. and such again. So yep. Yes, indeed. All right. This is the update for the 10th of May, uh, and it is called simply The Song of Saren. And it says here, Today marks the beginning of a dangerous new chapter in Gilinor's history, and it all kicks off with The Song of Saren and a new quest, Desperate Times, coming on Monday. Saren is forming an army, and her song is an ideal opportunity for you to prepare for battle. Song of Saren is similar to Voice of Saren, except that this time the effects are not limited to the great city of Priftinus. I feel like we've read this part already. Did, did we? We have pretty much read all this. Basically, yes. the time to Saren, what we really want to look at here is, is, is the, the timetable. Time table. Yes. Yeah. Cool. So I will skip down to the timetable, to time to Saren. Running alongside Song of Saren is this specifically. So let's see here. So when is this? So we have... Um, so the 10th of May, 11th of May, 12th of May, 13th. Okay, so we have the timetable here, specifically. So, gathering support. So it changes, wow, okay. Every hour, basically, or every two hours? Every two hours. Every two hours, okay. Yeah. So for the first two hours of the day, it's gathering, and then it switches to support, then artisan, then combat, then gathering support. So basically... Um, it's it's gathering support artisan combat gathering support artisan combats gathering support artisan combat support artisan combat gathering support artisan combat yeah it, it goes in a pattern it's it's not random yeah okay it's gathering support artisan combat gathering support artisan combat gathering support artisan combat and then on the next day it changes support artisan combat gathering so that uh, everyone will get a chance you know if you play in sort of a sort of a yeah. 
two, four, six hour period, you're going to get a chance at sort of everything in your time time frame. Yeah, and then on the last day, it's artists in combat gathering support. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how they break it down. There's a timetable here. Uh, there's a link in the show notes for you, but it's runescape.com and the Song of Saren if you need the timetable. Uh, then there's the Hunter Modernization blog. That's our next up here. This is probably going to be our more interesting post here. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it says, hi there. <laughs> We're excited to announce that a brand new hunter method will be introduced to the game in July that will completely change the way you hunt. Among the changes are the introduction of PVM style drops, which we know skillers have been asking about for some time. Other changes will include making the elite hunter outfit available to earn in game. More uh, more concessions to AFK players and a new tier of Salamander that is exclusively for Hunter. So, why are we doing this? We're always looking at the game to see what works, what doesn't work, and what could be better. And when we looked at Hunter, we recognized that the top end of the skill's experience had spiraled way out of control. With these changes, we intended to modernize the skill, ensuring its longevity and keeping everything fair. A closer look. Before the arrival of the Crystallized Spell, alongside the quest The Light Within in 2015, Hunter was in a good place and was reasonably well balanced. Top end XP per hour rates at unboosted levels 99 were about 250,000. However, Crystallized changed everything. XP per hour rates rocketed to around 900k when boosted. Ultimately, we can't just leave this as it is because it has an unbalanced effect on the endgame. Compounding the problem, the effect of Crystallize meant that any new Hunter content had to compete with this already sky-high rate to be relevant. For example, the arrival of skilled Chompas and Tortles raised the ceiling even further. Some players were earning over a million per hour unboosted. Add in the likes of the Elite Skilling Outfit, Tracker Aura, and Enhanced Yachtwee Stick, and 1.4 million per hour was achievable, an unparalleled number to any other non-buyable skill, and quadruple the earlier peak. And that's before things like Bonus XP Clan Avatar or Pulse Cores are factored in. Plus, doesn't um, that doesn't even include tick manipulation, which allowed players to set traps faster than we had intended. That pushed it up to 1.92 million XP per hour mark, which most players would recognize was a problematic action, and that's why we needed to fix it. Hmm. The problem, and that's exactly go. right. I mean, you know, as I say, that used to be 250k an hour. Yeah, if, even if it went up to 500k an hour, that that that's fine. But when you're talking 900k and then over a million, and these are all unboosted. These are before you're using all those, you know, sort of extra percentage boosters that you can get. So you can see why this really had to be done. I know a lot of people are, are, are jumping up and down and crying about it, and. You know, calling it a nerf and such, but this this is a a, a really a necessary nerf. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a fix. The problem will only worsen if we do nothing, with rates being pushed higher and higher with every update. So in line with our attempts to be bolder in our decision-making and in spirit with the five-year skilling plan discussed at RuneFest 2017, we are taking the necessary steps to address these issues before it spirals further out of hand. We believe our changes will improve the hunter experience, giving you a choice for whether you want to train depending on your needs. They will leave hunter in a better health and improve XP rates within the game. Crystallize. Thank you. And Good. again, yeah, it's a bold decision, but yeah. this is the type of decisions they have to make. I mean, I, yeah. you've got to stop just sitting there and, and rolling over, you know, waiting to be kicked again. You know, you've got to do these. And if people are going to yell and scream and rant and rave, well tough titties i mean for the health of the game you have to do this and good on you for biting the bullet and doing it i agree this is the right thing to do i applaud them i mean this is the leadership that we need and this is the right mm. direction to take for the game i mean this is the right thing to do whether the player base wants it or not this is the right thing to do for the game yes crystallize there's no denying that crystallize is the main culprit for spiraling xp rates 
any attempt to modernize the skill, therefore, needs to begin with a fundamental rework of this spell. The new crystallized effect can be cast on an empty set box trap as opposed to full ones. For 30 seconds after this is cast, any eligible creature that enters the trap successfully will be caught and freed automatically, yielding XP, but no resource. And again, we we talked about that briefly in the uh, the uh, the TLDW, uh, and I love it. I think that's great. It increases the AFK ability, and yep. it does what crystallize is supposed to do. You know, it it gives you a way to spend money on runes. It's a it's a money sink, uh, and you know, it adds utility to magic, and it also makes hunter faster, better, stronger. I love it. The following creatures are eligible. Ferrets, Polar Kebit. I think I already said this basically in the TLDW, so I won't repeat yes. myself. Uh, tick manip- basically everything except the Crystal Chin Chompers. Yeah. Uh, tick Manipulation. For those who aren't familiar, Tick Manipulation is a method that speeds up trap laying processes through potion drinking. This is not intended training method and is, uh, in fact, gameplay bug. Like continuous fortune auto attack. For basically, what you would do is you drink a perfect plus potion and then a- attempt to drink, you know, a a, per- a hunter juju potion, and it would say you already have a stronger potion active, and it would cancel the an- the animation to lay the trap. Um, thus, wow. it will you would automatically lay the trap without the animation playing. So that's almost bug abuse. It is bug abuse. <laughs> it's a gameplay <laughs> bug, as they say here, gameplay yeah. bug. Um, yeah, but I, yeah, that. Mm. <laughs> I, and I was using yeah. it, but then I decided that it was dirty, so I didn't do it. And um, I, you know, I was like, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna fix it, and they did. They are. They're fixing it. So here we are. I'm waiting, and I, once they rework it, I will then get 120 hunter the right way, because this sounds way more fun. Yes, than and that's what breaking my we fucking play, hand. It, Good. We play games for fun. I mean, yeah, it's all about the journey to that final XP destination. I mean, you race right to the end, and then what do you got to do? I mean, you want a fun, interactive way to play the game, and this is introducing that for us. So I am really excited about this update. Yeah, this is a good-looking uh, update. I mean, for Hunter, to, to see a good Hunter update is is rare, so kudos to the team here as a result of these changes we can safely say that xp rates will be all uh, already be healthier be already in a healthier place than they are right now the two primary training methods crystallized chinchampas and ornate turtles will give less xp per hour in addition we will be implementing a change to skin ch- skill chompas, not skin chompas, that will ensure the multiple catches no longer yield additional XP, bringing Hunter into alignment with the game's other skills, which is good. We there should not be anomalous outliers that give massive bonus X. Like that's just it's silly to you know Hunter. We always you know you think oh Hunter sucks, so you can, you can get two million XP per hour and that's why. No, that's not why that was the case. It's because there was a bug. Mm. Uh, we will also be buffing the XP parades in one of the other training methods according to their intensity and value. At the end of all of this assorted methods, we will be far more in the tune than they are and were before. Uh, buffs and boosts. As with all skills, a large range of buffs and boosts are available when skilling Hunter. As most of these are applicable across multiple skills, the scope of our changes is quite limited. However, the following alterations are being made. Again, the Octoe Stick from 5 to 2%. The Enhanced Octoe Stick from 5% to 20% when catching sprites. Uh, the Enhanced Octoe Stick can, be may, uh, can now be worn when barehand catching butterflies, which is a big improvement because that is a, mm. an AFK activity now. Yep. Uh, chance to auto deploy and pick up traps from the volcanic trapper outfit will also increase from ten percent to thirty percent, which is also big help. Awesome. Yep. And uh, as mentioned above, the elite trapper outfit will now have an increased chance of you know deploying traps and whatnot. You'll also be able to earn the uh, trapper outfit in game, I believe. Uh, well, we intended to rework the hunter skill cape perk. 
an issue, uh, and the issue is still in discussion among our team. Our aim is, of course, for the perk to be uh, of benefit for those training the skill, especially as the current perk is actually detrimental for high-level hunters. We are always open to your suggestions, so please drop your thoughts in our Discord channel. Other hunter changes. So again, I talked about the barehanded butterfly changes, which uh, which are great, uh, and they aren't going to tell us more about the PVM style hunter uh, yet. That's still under wraps until later. One thing: the new yellow salamander it's just purely XP uh, without. Yeah being sort of useful in game what do you think of that do you think that they should have introduced that as that next level next tier of weapon ranged weapon above uh the black salamander that you know players could go and and get themselves or perhaps make it like dual wielding salamanders hmm. uh you know because a black salamander is a two-handed weapon hmm. do you think they should have perhaps looked at something like that so that it is also I yeah, think... something Iron Man can sort of vie for and have something useful to gain uh, right. out of Hunter at that level? Or I'm not against the idea, but right now I think that they mm. should focus more on fixing weapon diversity. Yes. Yeah. Because... Oh, yeah, of course. I just, yeah. I mean, I, I, I was I, just sort of thinking yeah. it might be, you know, it might be, it's great. I mean, it depends. I mean, if, if this is going to be super high XP, then, you know, obviously... You know, you don't want that, uh, you know, that that item coming. But maybe there's a chance. You know, maybe that's one of the things on the drop table. There's a chance to get a special uh, yellow salamander that that can be used as a weapon. But it's you know, it's it's a it's a one in a thousand chance or something like that. But you know, again, things that they can sort of tweak and uh, and look at down the track. I, I really love what they're talking about and what they're doing. Uh, it's uh, like they the hired real developers this. this year. It's really good. <laughs> they've they've been really knocking it out of the park this year i mean there were definitely there was a lull for a bit um i think but that's normal for uh for i think like march and april have been you know it's a normal quiet period because that's when they're developing their extra large projects um yeah for the summer so you know that's normal but we're ramping up for the summer uh the big releases are on their way so you know we're starting to kind of see those with the hunter coming out here. And I think more is on the horizon with that big quest. And we're starting to see, you know, the big, you know, the icebergs at break in. Oh, it's going to be good. Uh, this summer is looking pretty, pretty tasty. You know, uh, I'm, I'm enjoying Eve, but I, you know, I can split screen. I, I've, 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 uh, <laughs> I was saying it the other day. I've, I've become adept at, uh, at hauling and AFK skilling in both games. Now I can, I've, I've got the control scheme down in Eve now that I can comfortably comfortably play uh, between two games. It's Planet Side's the only game I can't I can't play uh, two games because first person shooter you can't play RuneScape. The second you the second you look away from a you know you get freaking sniped. Anyway, um, is there anything else from this document that wasn't covered in the TLDW? We've we, yeah, everything else is pretty much covered in the TLDW. I'm right. just uh, so scanning down there. My face is literally so, yeah. tingling. Like I'm, I'm no, that's okay. In physical discomfort from reading this document. Uh, next up, we have uh, from Reddit uh, a post by Delta Slug who says, "Elite Skillers Omni Outfit, an outfit that lets you swap between completed elite skilling outfits." Jmods have said we won't get a true all-in-one skilling elite outfit for a variety of reasons. But what, how about a single elite skilling outfit that can swap between your existing completed skilling outfits? This way, you don't have to use up all the bank space trying to hold each one of them. You must have unlocked the final version of all the pieces of the elite skilling outfit, i.e. the Warped Garage and uh, Trailblazer, Elder Divination, etc. This set will equip as normal, head body, legs, hands, and feet, and we'll now have an option to switch between sets. This set will have a new option that if you activated, say, the Fury Shark outfit, an interface will appear similar to one you see for teleportation jewelry, and we'll let you select a new option for the next Skilling Elite outfit that you have unlocked. Um, it's not a bad idea. I don't mind it, sort of combining them all into one. But the bank space thing is sort of moot now because you store them with Diango anyway. It doesn't cost you anything to reclaim from Diango like some of the uh, weapons and, and armor does. Mm -hmm. So, but 
for convenience sake, and especially when you are setting up your your presets, mm -hmm. uh, I, I I would like because I do a lot of the sk different skilling. Uh, you know, I, I'll get bored of one thing and jump onto another, and it is sort of annoying having to go back, destroy this outfit, pull out the next one from Diango, equip it, reset all the uh, all, all your um, presets. Sort of having one preset for a skilling outfit would be really handy. Uh, so I don't mind the idea. I, I I think it would be good. Again, I would like it. <sighs> Yeah, you know, not not on Treasure Hunter, but something that you have to earn to be able to do it. Say it's got, say it's a level you know, one hundred and fifteen invention perk that you know you sort of have to have that so you can learn how to do it. Maybe get the blueprints from a just a just a little basic quest, uh, you know, something like that. Uh, I, I don't want to just sort of given. I would like to see some way of earning the ability to do this in game though. Yeah, that, it would be a nice quest. Be an interesting mm. quest, at least. Great quest reward, yeah. Yeah. You know, you have to go and do something at each of those um, each of those skills to be able to... Maybe it could be like a little... Yeah, you know, like the old uh, Recipe for Disaster quest. You could have a little... Each elite outfit has its own little mini quest that you've got to go and do. And it only has to be a, you know, a 10, 15-minute thing for each one. Uh, and as you get each unlock each outfit, you go and... And you know, do a little quest for the master hunter, the master farmer, whatever, to uh, you know, find out how to. He'll give you a blueprint on how to unlock to you know, yeah. add it to your uh, your omni, you know, the combination one. So I, I would like that if if it come with additional content like that. Yeah, it was like a little lore, and you were yeah, that'd be interesting. yeah. Hmm. All right, moving along. Let's see. We got suspicious emails from Lord Sponge. So, over the last couple of weeks, I've been getting emails about account passwords being changed and my email being changed. These are scam emails. However, as none of these things have happened to my account, I checked, as I've got emails, of course. These emails look very legit and convincing, so I fear they may trick other people. They always contain a link in which you have to click and use your login details. I reckon that's the way they get your details. Holy shit! You think? The sender of these emails is no reply at e.runescape.com, and of course, I want these emails to stop, so I was wondering if there's a sort of way to contact Jagex so they could look into the problem somehow, but everywhere I look, it is extremely difficult to get some sort of contact information, which highly bugs me. So, is there a way... I'm sorry, is there no way to get in touch with Jagex about this, or is it even something they can do anything about? Well, that's the big one right there. No. Yeah. That's the big kicker. No, no. I mean, that's the thing. Anyone can send an email saying they're anyone. It's just like anyone can call anyone saying they're anyone. You know, mm, exactly. It just doesn't like you know. Welcome to chaos. Welcome to anarchy. Thanks. <laughs> exactly. Uh, the biggest thing there he's got no at e dot runescape. Now runescape will have just at runescape dot com, but uh, yeah. you never know. As a as a hell frost uh, has a link down there on how to recognize uh, Jagex emails, and it goes in. Uh, a whole a whole thing on how to uh, how to identify them and where to report them at and there's a report phishing at jagex.com so you just forward the actual unopened email to them there and they can uh, try and get that uh, try and get that shut down yeah but the, the real thing to do just whatever you do don't click on links <laughs> someone showed a really creepy example this morning though on on, on reddit that was really lifelike. Uh, it even had their name in it and everything, which is that's a spear phishing attempt. Like if they put your if they put your actual player name in it, which that is scary. <laughs> yeah, and the thing is, Jagex because that's how Jagex sends player you know information. Mm. Out, is they they will always put your name in it. But 
One thing Jagex won't do ever, ever, ever is email you about account rule breaking. If you have broken a rule in game, like if you're if you macroed and you bought, bought it and you got banned, they're not going to email you about it. Not going to happen. Nope. Just not going to happen. It'll only be on your in-game email yep. uh, link when you try and log in. There's a little little envelope at the top of your screen or top of the uh, login screen there, uh, which will have a little one there if you have a message. That is the only way you will get a message from Jagex about rule breaking, botting, macroing, etc. Yeah, and that's that's the main thing. People think, oh, it's got it's got my name in it, and these links look legitimate. But you can make a link look legitimate. I mean, I can type a link out, right? But I can, if you hover over it, a link. Can, yeah. yeah, you can you can have it go somewhere else, but look like it's going somewhere anyway. And then it can also even look like a legitimate URL, and you can whatever. I have a video on on that on on my YouTube channel, RuneScape Video, on how to identify malicious URLs. But RuneScape also has in their database on their website how to identify their URLs. But anyway, point being, if you are suspected of being involved in a malicious rule-breaking scenario, email will not be the way Jagex contacts you. They will contact you via the message center, via their website only. The, they will never initiate contact via email. Uh, the only thing that they will initiate contact via email for are promotions and billing, that type of stuff. And I like mainly just promotions. Even billing is is just like if you've like started it, like you have to generally start the billing stuff on on email. It's mainly just promotions. Anyway, continuing on. <laughs> I am not Jagex customer support. Fix farm cape bug, please. Well, the next couple I have to log into. Sorry. It's okay. I got this one here. Yep. Dan Dan says, <laughs> I don't like having to take my farming cape when I harvest fruit or shrooms and other stuff or risk losing out on my money and crops. It's been like this for years. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, please fix this bug. Now, having to wear the cape for the perk is not a bug it's been like that for years because that's the way it's designed uh, <laughs> just... i found that one and i just sort yeah. of had to throw that one in and uh and... Post. Good. <laughs> uh, and there's someone else uh tenebris says i remember doing farming without this perk people have it easy these days and complain poor little snowflakes but if there is a bug it should be fixed Please. uh but it is, as we said, it's not a bug. I just like he keeps going, please fix this bug. Many players don't even know they losing out when they wearing farming cape and harvesting certain crops. How do you not know? It says your farming cape just gave you a, a bunch of different crops. Big thing <laughs> pops up on screen in red. <laughs> the player must take it on and off on the correct crops. It's really a pain. E Why do you have to take it off? Just leave it on when you're farming. It doesn't matter. Even the wisest people don't know all the right crops that it works on. For example, I don't know if I lose crops if I wear the farming cave while harvesting hops patches. You don't lose crops off any of them. If you're wearing your cape, you if the cape procs you will get your extras oh my God. <laughs> but you have to keep it on at all times he's the wisest though pern <laughs> only only he, he says right here even the wisest people don't know and then he said list for example i don't know so and he says yeah. so even the wisest so he's clearly the wisest <laughs> I'm wearing my uh, my wood cutting cape at the moment, which has an increased chance of receiving bird's nests and crystal geodes. Are you, are you but how do I know if, if it's giving me those extra ones? How do I know it's just normal? Is, is, is it perking for you? Yeah, Where, I mean, yeah, I don't see that many. <laughs> got to turn on debug mode and have that data just flowing on screen at all times. I need to know. Uh, I did love that one. Okay, the next one comes to us from First Ranger, and he says, Introducing RuneScape Go. RuneScape Go is a mobile app that will earn you agility experience by walking or running in real life. This way, a lot of people who does not have the time or works 8 to 10 hour jobs can still get the benefit. 
RuneScape never forgets their players, so Jagex should make a new way to earn agility experience. Example, if you walk 10,000 steps a day, that might get that might be the same as perhaps 70k agility experience or something like that. Don't you think that this would be great? It should be an app that you can easily download from App Store, and then you should be able to link your account, only one per phone. And this will make all the players who are already fit, but also those who are not fit, more likely to go out there and put in some work on their overall health. This is an idea that I think could be a great improvement to the connection Jagex has with their players, and furthermore, give them a reward for being active and healthy. <laughs> so... If you think botting is a problem now, <laughs> I, I, so I was just thinking I just set up that perpetu perpetual mo motion thing that just keeps rolling over and over. So I'm doing four hundred thousand steps a day. People are just going <laughs> to attach their phones to ceiling fans. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> or just just sit there bouncing your leg up and yeah. down while you're sitting yeah. playing another game. And <laughs> people have yeah, people have plenty of practice moving their hand up in an up and down motion. RuneScape players. <laughs> I I always uh, I read this one and I immediately thought of. Uh, do you watch Big Bang Theory? I don't, but I know all about it. Go no. Okay, Howard, uh, the Jewish guy on there, his wife bought him a Fitbit because she wanted him to get healthier, mm -hmm. and he's he just made a little machine at work because he's an engineer. Made this little machine at work, hooked it up on there, and said, said to the guys, "Okay, now let's go for pizza." <laughs> <laughs> just rolling there, he gets home. He's, "Why does your Fitbit say you walk two hundred and fifty thousand kilometers today?" Because <laughs> he put it on high speed and forgot. <laughs> That's awesome. That's it was. It was just. It just. As soon as I read this, I uh, I found it. Ah. And anyway, there's this here. Uh, just Google fitness tracker cheat, and you'll find dozens of ways to let an activity tracker believe it's tracking your steps when it's actually hooked onto some other moving device. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. There's just. It's too easy to uh, fool those things. I know. Uh, it's so uh, funny. But, yeah. I mean, I like this sort of trying to oh, yeah. help. Yeah, help get gamers fit up, but yeah, it's... Uh... I love the idea. If if RuneScape yeah. wasn't such an XP-focused game, like, I would love it. Like, it, Pokemon Go, it works mm. with because the, the game is based around being outside and being around catching the the Pokemon yeah. that are, like, outside. because they're in different areas. Yeah. You have to go and find them. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But RuneScape <gasps> isn't about, like, everything is static, yeah. Good. RuneScape Go, where you go out and you've got to find hunter creatures. That's your new hunting and agility XP. Uh, it's Pokemon Go for, for hunter and agility. You've got to do all that walking, find that creature to get your XP. The wilderness. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> There's one in the middle of the freeway. You've got to run out there and get it without getting hit by a car. <laughs> That's the problem, is you give RuneScape players <laughs> augmented reality. <laughs> And There's going to be 3,000 dead people in a week. In a day. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, that was nice. I just got 20 huge plated round, uh, rune salvage from my Seren spirit. We can not we, we can we can barely handle one convention a year without people going to jail. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, anyway, as I said, I, I like the idea. And, I mean, you know, a good way to try and get people fit, but, yeah, never work in RuneScape. I mean, you look at our community, they're always looking for life hacks in the game. So it'll be done within three minutes of it uh, being out. There'll be someone sort of maxing 99 agility. <laughs> oh, yeah, you'd find, you'd find someone being like, welcome to my, welcome to my road trip, Iron Man. Like, we're, we're driving <laughs> to 99 agility across the country. Like, what? <laughs> Not sleeping. Uh... <laughs> On the pistons of the car as they're going up and down. There's this, you got this tracker tied to it. Uh, anyway, moving on to uh, our next one uh, from Five Gum. Five Gum. Oh, he man. wants to condense the community so he can taste so. the sensations. Uh, I'll. Do you want to do this yes. one and I'll do the stop bots one? Sure. sure. <laughs> I've noticed that over there are over 140 servers in RuneScape Three, but most of them have only 50-ish players at any given time. I can understand why some people would enjoy this, but it's... Now, home, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. First thing, over 150-plus servers. No, there's 150, 140-plus worlds. 
But it's not one server per world. Right. <laughs> I can understand why some people would enjoy this because it's almost like a private server where you can train without competition. However, it seems that the RuneScape 3 player base isn't increasing, and when you have few players spread across a large amount of worlds, it becomes more of a solo game rather than an MMORPG. The solo aspect, or the, sorry, the social aspect, talking with other players and meeting new people to interact with has become less likely when you venture from the common areas like the Grand Exchange. It's a pretty large map, and it's mostly empty of other players when you go out doing play, uh, Slayer in a quest of some sort. If we subtracted the amount of worlds, even by a dozen or so, it would be it would condense the, the players and more, and maybe uh, even seemingly be p uh, more people to enjoy the game. You would be so angry. Oh God. Yep. Like the Good training try. areas would be so full. Mm. And I mean, I mean, ten or twelve worlds. I mean, I don't think it'd be a big issue losing. Uh, when they were talking like 25 or 30%, I think that's a bit too much. I mean, you wouldn't mind seeing a few worlds sort of close down and, and condense a little bit. But let's let's be honest. I mean, there are so many people trolling and carrying on these days on the internet. Do you really... I mean, I don't go on the internet to socialise with other people anymore because it's just... <laughs> people aren't nice to deal with <laughs> in a game. Like, you know... We had one of our guys uh, in the clan chat. Was, uh, he was out hunting Mogas, of all things. And he got crashed there. At Mogas. Huh? You jump one world. And, you know, it's, it's not like Mogas are it was a hard thing to do. And it's like, he's in our chat going, this guy has been crashing me. It's like, uh, I mean, I would have just jumped by myself. I wouldn't have sat there and tried to fight again. So I thought, yeah, okay, you're a dick. I'm out of you. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I was I was cutting uh, Acadia logs earlier uh, and a low level come up and started cutting them. And like, I'm getting generally, I can get almost fill an inventory on one tree. As soon as he started, it's like two or three logs, two or three logs. Because he's lower level, it, it, it disappears a lot quicker. So I stuff this. So I just hop worlds. It's the, like, you know, I can abuse him and tell him to go or I can just, hey, jump a world the, and I'm the fine. The one way to get away <laughs> from that is to go the way of, like, how we're, how they're going with, like, Hunter is, like, don't deplete the resources. Or, like, with mining, don't deplete the mining, resources. Yeah. Uh, yeah. With, with the butterflies, like, don't deplete the resource. Well, you know, like, mm. players shouldn't deplete other players' resources. So they're not no, – it's, yeah. it's not a competition. It's a – it's a social thing. Exactly. That I would love to see more of that in game so that people do get together. But another big thing that uh, the the other big thing that they um, uh, sort of oh shit, I forgot where I was going now. I just read uh, Wiley coming in again with his vampire bug. That's not a bug. <laughs> now I just totally I just totally lost my uh, oh, train of thought. Now, God, I hate when that. Um, yeah, I know. Oh, no, sorry, that's what I was going to say. Uh, the, the, the way we teleport around now with all the lodestones, you don't walk area, anywhere and see other people in, in other places anymore. You know, you don't see people questing because you're not in those areas because you're just teleporting. You're not running through those areas anymore. Yeah, yeah. You never get to see anything because it's just bam, bam, bam. No, lodestone, exactly. lodestone, lodestone. Hmm. Anyway, shall we? I tried to spend, I, I tried to, I thought I'm going to go a week without you lodestone uh a few weeks ago i lasted about three yeah three hours <laughs> <laughs> that's not very long what it's happened just, it's just no no I, I think i went about a day and a half but it's just like no i just want to get there quickly i'm just gonna, i'm just gonna lodestone <laughs> path of least path of least resistance man exactly i know it's like i mean the farming xp i mean i, I love doing the player own farms the XP is just so quick that it worries me. So I'm going to hit oh, 200 mil too quickly, but I want to play it. And I can go, well, I just don't, what I can do is just take the animals out and not check them. Cause I'm going for all the Raven Swan. I need three mm. more Raven Swan animals to yeah. have them all. Yeah. And it's like, well, just don't, just don't check them. Just take them out. If it's not a Raven Swan, so you don't get the XP, but it's like, yeah, but I grew that animal and such, and I've, I've, I've earned the XP. So I, I still want it, even though it's too much. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, I feel you. Anyway, I yes. destroyed a spider when it gave me a spider out of the uh, 
loot crate from watching a Twitch stream, and I it's, yeah, it's yeah, still I just hurt. destroyed that. Yeah, it still hurt a little bit to destroy it. Uh, well, I'm though... chasing at the moment. I'm doing the cows, so all I'm doing is I'm I'm I am actually just removing the cows and dropping them. I'm not getting beans for them, and I'm not getting <laughs> XP for them because <laughs> they're only like you know uh, I think it's about a hundred. See, that's uh, I, I would anyway. I would probably just raise those animals, just the low level animals. That's what I would do to enjoy mm. the, the skill. Um, yeah, but I need I need the Raven Swarm title. That's, yeah, uh, you're hunting something specific. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, speaking of uh, hunting things, this guy wants to stop bots. Nice. He wants to hunt out all the bots in game. This is by Hallowed Ninety, and he is a free to play player. How to stop bots the easy way. I have returned. I have recently returned to RuneScape after about an 8 or 10 year gap. I'm sad to see that both mining and woodcutting are still dominated by bots, and I'm really surprised that this has not yet been fixed by Jagex. I have an idea that could end this long spate of botting for good. Do a vote, and I'm sure all genuine players would vote for it. Every 30 minutes of playtime, a player should be greeted with... He's got grated, but he, I think he means greeted with a random I am not a robot question. Mm, sounds good. Whether it's copy the jumble of letters or click all the pictures containing lampposts, because there's nothing that can identify those in there now. No. Yeah. If there were random every 30 minutes, then if logged out due to incorrect or no answer, you had to answer one on the next login, then this should surely defeat the bots and require human interaction at least every 30 minutes, which would at least make it harder for them. Thanks for listening. I hope Jagex considers it. Can you imagine you're in the middle of fighting AOD and it says, please pick out all the lampposts, right? <laughs> Thank you, going, going, going for the follow. I appreciate that. Right? <laughs> like, what the? What? <laughs> First of all, like, those types of systems were defeated 15 years ago. Second of all. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> where have you? Yeah, like, literally, he, he, he says, I just came back from an 8 to 10 year gap and it presents a solution from 8 to 10 years ago. So, you know, to be fair, that's kind of accurate to where he last picked up from just to give him a little bit of um, credit before I absolutely rip him a new asshole because that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> um, and also, he, let's, he is a free-to-play player as well. So he's on those free-to-play worlds where... There are tons. I mean, we don't, we, we don't see bots in, in, yeah. in the, the members' I don't see worlds, anyone but here. They are probably, yeah. <laughs> Good. He was... I'm just reading. I've I've been stood mining in Varrock Mine for 40 minutes with a group of six bots. I've reported them all. By the time it gets to the point where anything uh, is maybe even done, it won't help me at all. The way I suggested, well, they're not going to bother you anymore anyway because they're not depleting your resources. So they're not hurting you in any way. That's that's the, that's the beauty of the mining and smithing update is yeah. that they, yeah. You, wood cutting bots, yeah, I can understand that they hurt you. Uh, Money-wise, yeah, probably they, they will hurt you and mm. such. But, um, you know, it, it's A, you're on a free-to-play world, so you are going to do that if you want to avoid uh, those, those bots. And... Jagex wipes out these bots very quickly, but you know, as soon as they wipe out ten, there's another ten to replace them tomorrow. You know, it's yeah. it's it's yeah. it's it's a never ending. Well, it's like the war on drugs; it's never ending. Yeah, I mean, these bots will but just keep getting have... destroyed, but yes, they will come right exactly. Back. Yeah, uh, I mean, we don't have anywhere near the problem that they do on on old school because obviously of the botting system. But I mean, when you do play free to play world. Uh, unfortunately, you are going to have to expect to contend with uh, with some of those bots out there. And, you know, Jagex does their best to keep on top. We've got a great bot watch system, but, you know, it does take time. And sometimes they want to keep those bots there to track where the money and such is going as well. So do remember that. Just because they're not immediately banned, there, there may be other things behind it because they're tracking the source uh, of of where all that uh, all that gold that is being generated by these bots yeah. is going to to the ultimate uh, owning account, uh, yeah. so they can take that guy out, which is the main one they want to get. Yeah, they're less interested with who's buying and more with who's distributing. I mean, again, just like the horn on drugs, but mm. uh, and again, that is similarly, which is why it's failing, like the war on drugs. I mean, it's it's a it's a never ending thing. You you really. That's why the bond system was kind of created and, and, and yep. why 
that's actually why bots actually failed. Um, because <laughs> because Jagex ended up selling their own pro selling their own hmm. version. And why not? I mean, you know, why 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 should if some you can't third beat them be making exactly why should some third party be making the, the money out of it so jagex has come up with a great system which we can buy with in-game yep. gold so a clean yeah, kids, version good yep and if kids can't you know that you're, you're 14 or 15 year old and your your mom dad won't let you sort of use a credit card to, to be a member you can buy membership in game buy in-game play and exactly. such like that and someone who has got money can go and buy that you buy that bond, get their instant gold, so they want to buy their Nox and all that straight away. Yeah, a new player. It's, it, it is a brilliant yeah. system. Uh, I mean, obviously not a perfect system. In a perfect world, we wouldn't have to do yeah, it. There is, yeah. But hey, I mean, a thousand percent want that money in Jagex's pocket than some, you know, third world bloody guy who's sitting there, you know, scan, you know using all these little uh chinese kids to, to to sit there and mine for hours on end and he's pocketing you know thousands of dollars every week out of it yeah in a perfect world there wouldn't be sweatshops there wouldn't be forced labor yeah, exactly. there, there wouldn't be jo there wouldn't be jobs as far as i'm concerned in a perfect world we would just do what we wanted to do you know yeah. everyone would just in be a perfect doing in a perfect world everyone would just listen to me yeah <laughs> yeah in your perfect world <laughs> yeah. i almost agreed to that for a second <laughs> yeah, i know you did yeah yeah oh no hang on <laughs> but yeah that's uh there, there, there's no easy way to stop bots and that is definitely not the way because could you imagine the pvm as yeah right right at that that uh, yeah crucial timing and this pop up to ask you a question <laughs> right. oh yeah i know i know so what I was... to a task and you used yeah, to get taken then... away to the sandwich shop and, and then yeah, and and then, and then come the caveats <laughs> okay and then oh, oh of course but not when you're bossing oh but and then but not when you're doing this and then not when you're doing that and then by the time you're done with it it's not an anti-botting system anymore you know exactly so that's those systems don't work because of exactly that. The outrage they cause by the players and yada, yada, yada. And again, that's why those systems were defeated 10 to 15 years ago. And that's why modern times require modern solutions. Like the MTX Infinity Gauntlet by Jeremy Chang. <laughs> oh, Jeremy Chang, one of our uh, <sighs> favorite trolls on, yeah. the, on the forums. Yep, so... <laughs> <clears throat> this post here says by Jeremy Shank says Jagex has completed the MTX gauntlet. What's next for the mad game developer? So they say here they've broken it down, and this is a metaphor, I guess, for Jagex well, bas basically selling out. Go ahead. No, basically, if you if anyone has seen uh, Endgame, uh, Avengers Endgame, sure, uh, he yeah, the gauntlet that he makes with the six Infinity Stones. These are the these are the uh, the, the six infinity stones that he says uh, of MTX. Yes, and the but <laughs> but the but in the gauntlet itself is what is his power is drawn from, right? That's what he uses yes. to cleanse the yeah. planet. So what he's saying here is ultimately Jagex has completed the gauntlet now, and that with a snap of their fingers they could basically destroy the game. I'm assuming. <laughs> Um, but he says, Treasure Hunter equals the Soul Gem. Solomon's General Store equals the Reality Gem. Rune Pass is the Time Gem. Bonds is the Power Gem. Rune Metrics was the Space Gem. Buying tickets to Rune Fest with Bonds was the Mind Gem. So, Which obviously can't be hasn't been able to be done for the last three years, yeah, mind that, you. That was a that was a, <laughs> one, a one time thing that will probably never happen again because I'm pretty sure yeah. it's it's illegal now. Yes. Um, but all right, so let's break this to, to so, treasure hunter soul gem. I'm assuming they sold their soul for. He's selling his. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Solomon's general soul store the reality gem. Uh, it's that's our new reality that we live in. I'm guessing it's yeah. Dare, dare, you, just, dare. you buy you buy things. It's our day yeah, day, so right? you, you get you get something real for technically real for your money rather than <clears> just sort of selling your soul for a spin. <laughs> uh, so rune pass time gem. I, it's a limited time well, time gated. Uh, yeah, yep. time gated yep. event. Uh, bonds being uh, is a power gem. Being the person who purchased the bonds have all the power, I suppose. Yeah, because you can power up quickly with yep. uh, just by straight money. Yeah. Uh, Rune metrics equals the space gem. I don't. I don't understand, understand that one though. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand. Uh, 
I'm I gotta think about that one. I'll come back to that one. And buying tickets <laughs> to Runefest with Bonds is the mind jam. As far I, I'm, I'm just I thinking about. I'm either. thinking about like the the, the the meme where like the person points into their head, where it's just like, okay, yeah, you were super smart, thinking like, hey, yeah, I'm I'm, I actually was smart enough to put to buy my way to Runefest with Bonds because it was a one time opportunity and I got away with it. Like that's the only thing I can okay. think of. Like yeah, you, fair enough. You were like 300 IQ and actually got to do that because no one else is ever going to be able to do that ever again. Um, that's the only thing I can think of. But the space gem for Rune Metrics, um, it keeps track of your um, your 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 drops through all time and space. I don't know through all time. Okay, fair enough. I just want to also go on to uh, to Blackwing, who says uh, Jeremy Cheng said the point is how can we solve Jagex revenue problem to not have to rely on MTX? <clears throat> he has a simple reason. Simple, remove the MTX, which will result in increased membership revenue. What? So he reckons if you take out MTX, so the more people will buy. I, I need to be membership hot. revenue. The own the only way you'll do that is if you start charging fifty bucks a month for membership. Right. And you're not you're going to lose. I was but, going to sh- I was everyone show you, who I'll... is currently. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, if you're currently game pay, you are indentured to play for the next ten years uh, at fifty dollars a month. I was you about... cannot cancel. Yeah, I was going to show you a graph <laughs> that was going to show that was about to show you like membership cost uh, value raise versus uh, drop off mm. of people playing the game. Like you can only. You can only raise membership so high versus p- keeping people interested in the game, right? Right. So it's like, yes, you could get rid of all MTX, fine, great, and say, okay, yeah, well, you want to keep that same revenue uh, that MTX provided, great, okay. So let's say, yes, you'd have to make fifty dollars per month the act the active membership price, great, okay. So maybe that would make the active player count five hundred people. Um, you know, at any given time, right? Now you just destroyed the game, basically, right? Because that's the amount of people who are willing to pay fifty dollars per month. But you talk eleven dollars a month, you know, and now we're talking, you know, the forty, fifty thousand people at any given time are willing to pay that. Maybe thirty thousand, maybe twenty five thousand. I'm being maybe mm. hyperbolic, but. Still, you see that there's a there's a obviously a, a big difference there um, between eleven dollars and fifty dollars. But there's you know there may be a sweet spot at fifteen dollars, but fifteen dollars is not going to bring in the difference needed no, between exactly. slashing off treasure hunter. <laughs> and and we, we I mean, we've seen the figures. Yeah, membership was up. Yes, they made a profit if they relied solely on membership. They made a profit of about $1 million. That is not enough for a, for a company of that size. Now, when you add their Treasure Hunter and all, all their MTX sales as well, they made a profit of, of $28 million. Add, now, that, that profit came from that. Add, add, I mean, add Michael Tridagas to Old Currency to make it fair for us. There you go. Yes. Yep, exactly. I mean, the thing is, MTX is is something that every game company now uses that is online. You don't want to do that. Go and buy an Xbox, buy a player-only game that you know you don't log on to the internet and play against other people with. That is the only way you're going to get a non-MTX game these days, really. Whether it be just something that has got uh, you know just cosmetic outfits, whether it is loot boxes that give you uh, extra things, whether it is like uh, World of Tanks where you can pay $85 to get one one tank, one weapon, <laughs> you know? Right. It is in every single game. It is it is a fact of life. Companies need to work oh. out how to monetize things because, again, as we say, they, you know, they're not a not-for-profit organization. They're not a charity. They're there to make money. That is what a, a business is about. It is a money-making machine. That is why people invest in it. That's why people go to work and develop those things. They need to to earn a wage to put food on their table they need to work out way and those companies you know need to pay those people so they need to work a way to to, to be able to a pay their staff b keep their their shareholders happy and, and keep money going in so that they keep putting money into the game and keep it a viable living growing game 
you know, I just th these two people are just so. I mean, I mean, they're they're absolute morons. I, I I can't think of anything else. I mean, I am sure their IQ has to be lower than their shoe size because mm -hmm. they are just so dumb. I mean, they, they just don't understand anything. There's an article I probably should have tossed into the show for today that I didn't think about because it, it kind of, I mean, does affect RuneScape, but it probably won't go anywhere. And I was so sick of the topic that I didn't really think about it. But there's another U.S. lawmaker from some Midwest state that's trying to push for uh, making loot boxes illegal for minors uh, in the United States again, which obviously would be a problem for all game companies. Mm. Um they're doing that here in Australia too. It's like every week someone else is saying yeah. something. So it's I'm just sick of it because they keep doing it constantly, but you know, it's just every other month it's another state legislator trying to to do it. So um I just didn't bother what they've putting got it in the news. Go ahead. Yeah. If they if they want to get serious about it, you bring in some of your top game developers, you sit them down, uh you know, with with in, in an actual controlled group where you have a few of the, the actual game developers, a few of your lawmakers, you know, a few of the co concerned uh, you know, professors and such who understand the addiction all that, and you work out a way, listen, what can we do? How can we do it? What is going to be fair? Imagine. Do we sell? Do we move? Uh, you know, do we say, okay, things like Treasure Hunter, uh you know and let's let's face it treasure hunter is probably one of the as much as we, we all sort of hate it and don't like it here in the game because it is technically gambling at least you are getting something out of every single crate Imagine. i know a lot of those other ones so nothing but just go and, sh and sell straight xp you know so your lamps uh your bonus xp you can buy a one hour uh, bonus xp boost for a bond you can buy a, a pack of 10 lamps it's going to cost you you know three bonds things like that i mean that that is the other option that we we have in game because they they need another source of revenue other than just membership imagine actually hiring psychologists to make sure your microtransaction system wasn't dangerous Egregious, for miners yeah. instead of and again, trying to make it dangerous, <laughs> you know, addictive. Yeah. But this, but one, what, what one psychologist will say is okay, another one will argue it's anyway because it's not an exact science. Well, that's... but I mean, they they should still have. I mean, if you if if, if the governments want to get serious and, and, and come down. I mean, you still have to think about the profits of these companies because otherwise you're not going to be drawing taxes and things off them and such as well. You need to make sure that the companies stay viable as well. But if they want to get serious, they sit down, they bring in they, they bring in the company, they bring in psychologists, they bring in lawmakers and sit down there and they hash out something that this is it, this is going to be black and white, this is how we do it, this is what's allowed, this is what's not allowed. Let's work it out, Let you know, and get it out there and get something out there that 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 states what you can do what you can't do and, and get rid of this wild west type system that we have at the moment we're clearly just years off of this i mean there's of course people are just threatening because things left and right no, no action the politicians don't understand anything about it no i mean we saw by some of those questions that 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 clown was asking in the british parliament the other day and of course you know the, the heads of the companies don't want to minimize you know they don't want to start losing profits they, they need to maximize profits so they're not going to sort of curb what they yeah, curb themselves uh, on on some of these more egregious ones when when they can get away with it because they're going to maximize as much as they can as quick as they can because they know eventually it, it will change so they need to work it out properly and start you know start looking at, at these things and and get actual you know get actual panels together to discuss and talk and and work it out that 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 is going to be as fair as possible on all three sides. Government but anyway, fair. That's, not fair. <laughs> that's, funny. that's enough of mine. We got one topic left. Yep. Shall I cover it? This is speaking for the band masses. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Captain Beardy has quite the post for us here. He says, everyone keeps saying I'm botting on my other account. 
And no, I haven't been. I woke up this morning with the blue moon in my eye. No, to my main, to my main being permaban with no chance of appeal. I don't bought, nor would I. Back in 2005, maybe I did. <laughs> Fuck you, bro. I don't bought, nor would I. Well, maybe back in 2005 I did. <laughs> I, I would it. never kill anyone, and I never would. Although maybe back in 2005, except, I might have slit that guy's throat for his wallet. <laughs> except those three bodies in my trunk. But <laughs> that was a long time ago. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but that was a long time ago. With an account I no longer use <coughs> or own. I, I don't... Yeah, I, so, I sold it. <laughs> yeah. That's like, you know, I was like, you know, I, I changed my identity. I'm not that person anymore. So, you know, it's all good. <laughs> I don't not like... To, wow, that's a sentence. I don't not like or take kindly to botting. And this like a slap in the face. I'm going to... Hold on. I don't not like take kindly to botting. And this is like a slap in the face. That's, I, that's That sounds better. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would. I hope someone like realizes this issue, and maybe if I don't get my account back, they will at least realize that people who are skilling and choose not to talk are not necessarily bots. I don't love the way it spells necessarily too. <laughs> well, you know, C's are not necessarily part of the English language. <laughs> Uh, they're not necessary. Uh, I don't know what mod looked into my situation, but it confirmed by my com <laughs> by my mod comment. I think it flagged me while woodcutting last night, and I'm very upset. But it's all good. I'm, I'm on my other account, and I hope this doesn't happen again. Thanks, y'all. I think it flagged me while I was woodcutting last night after I went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a little just switch, just uh, yeah, fix the preposition there and change the tense. Uh, P.S. Uh, if my account was banned for botting, I don't play old school, and I'm a RuneScape three player. Therefore, my account was hijacked. Oh, <laughs> my chair just flew backwards. Uh, please, someone look so into this. So yeah, I've never cheated. I've yeah, I've not done that. It's a oh, but if it was on old school, well, I never play that. So maybe I got hacked instead. So what did you? Did you get hacked or did you get banned for botting? Or both? <laughs> Why not both? She's just having a bad day. Yeah. My goodness! <laughs> oh, what a day! Uh, now what where he day. says there's no chance at all of appeal, well there is. You can appeal that. They'll have a look at it. If it was that someone has hijacked your account and botted on it, uh, they will. They they can tell, and they'll have that reversed fairly quickly for you. My goodness, <laughs> Tenebris is just all over the place on the forums today. Even a ball. She had two step authentic. Does he have another account that he's talking under here? Or no, is... this is no, this is woo woo. This is someone else who said my girlfriend just had the same thing happen to her after oh. doing the. Glower quest for free to play, and we as a group of four with two friends were PKing. She had also just set up two set authentication or authentication, as, as he These says it there. Poor people. This is getting out of hand, and the mods need to start looking into IP address before handing out bans. People will start to take legal action people against need to them. Stop drinking and playing RuneScape at the same time. It's I like people will start taking legal action against them for unjust banning. Well, no, because you don't own that account. <laughs> Read your terms and conditions. Right. They own that account, not you. You lease the account. Yeah. <laughs> you do not own your account, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> as much as I wish I owned my account. I, but, you know. Holy crap, what a show. This got weird towards the end, and I'm all for that. <laughs> uh... Pulling up the notes. I think we're in the end cap now. <laughs> I butchered. Uh huh. Oh, this this we gets even better. Okay. Is she had two step authentication and we wear off 
by 2 a.m. CST, I would gladly give the mods all the IP information that they would want and the account has only been on 2PC in my house that comes off dynamic IP address. I find that it is completely BS that we as players have accounts with security that Jadix has for us, but we still get effed due to the fact instead of fact, that they don't check IP address before banning the account. So who has the mods held accountable for their actions? There, T-H-E-R-E. -E. Also, there are May accounts that have had this happen in the last 24 hours. There are May accounts. There you go. That what was... about the June accounts or the April accounts? <laughs> They're a little behind. Or maybe not. <laughs> maybe he's from the future. I'm confused. Am I meant to be confused? Because I'm confused. Oh, this is... I feel like I just got taken on an honest Ethan <laughs> customer service. Great help. jobs. Oh, well, this... Great jobs mod. You ban a real player and let all the bots go free. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, so what the reason they got banned because they were killing bots in the wilderness over four or five worlds I think last night. Net escaped Google and Research that's what... Labs. <laughs> oh, I love this. He's saying the reason they got banned or she got banned is because they were they were killing bots in the wilderness over four or five different worlds. That's why they got banned. Uh, so it's so it's a conspiracy <laughs> theory that like the bot... this is this woo woo. This is awesome. <laughs> I think Woo Woo is deep into their own Woo Woo. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Wow. <laughs> this, is a, this is strange. Oh, I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. I like it. I'm having, I'm having an inter interesting time, too. I'm going on to the next page now to see if there's <laughs> any more. Oh, why did it log me out again? Oh, Freaking Rans. All right, this is the one thing that RuneScape needs to fix about their website. Their cookie sessions are like 30 seconds long. I know. It's annoying. Everybody knows it, too. I don't. It's like. It's been complained about multiple times. The, the, the budget for the website department is like $2, I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure why. I can almost fish shark. I can't cook. So, them. Captain Beardy has admitted he doesn't have information on his. I mean, I'm authenticator. Yeah. Uh, I feel I could have been flagged my account, and then someone hijacking me. Was the 2K legit logs I had cut the other night? I was up to 2 a.m. working very hard. Wow. <laughs> he lost 2K logs legit. The other 20K uh, illegitimate ones that he uh, got through his thing were a different story, but... <laughs> <laughs> At least two of two K of them were legit. You can keep those. <laughs> Be nice. I'm sorry. Well, uh, English is every one of them. Uh, uh, he's he's English. He's he's from America. He's Southern. Uh, that is awesome. <laughs> A uh, woo woo's still oh, well, going. Well, actually, I, I don't know. Actually, I don't know about woo. -woo. I should. I should make fun of woo. -woo. I only know of beardies. Woo woo's talking about his girlfriend. He's going. All this is his girlfriend. She never bought it. She didn't do this. She didn't do this. Well, how do you know? I don't know anything about woo. -woo so I, yeah, my bad. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Anyway, that brings us to the end of the show. Anyway, yeah, we're good. Oh, I also need to tell the viewers or the listeners and viewers if we. Uh, I managed to pick up the Criara pet last week, and then two nights ago, I completed Ziliana. So I have completed the uh, full boss drop logs at God Wars Dungeon 1 now. So that's what I've been up to on RuneScape recently nice. because I haven't been able to get out and do much in the wilderness just because of my back's been really really bad last week and a half so uh while you've been playing eve online i've been afking ziliana thank you masterwork armor <laughs> very nice very nice anyway i have been playing eve online pretty much and writing uh, i've been working on uh mejbit.me pretty much i just finished my article it's about uh, like seven or eight pages long um having and, and having one of our uh, listeners actually edit it right now um and then i'm going to do a final draft on it 
and uh, probably by the end of the week and have it posted. And then uh, for patrons, I will read it. So people who don't want to read the whole thing but are curious um, you know, about it will be able to listen to it. It's probably a good, like, 15-minute read. Um, that will be an option for patrons. And, yeah, that, that'll be up on mejbit.me. But, yeah, that's pretty much what I've been working on. I've been, I've been putting a lot of work into my writing. Um, not as much work into uh, gaming the past couple of weeks. But Eve has been really fun because it's, uh, it's a pretty chill game. But I've also been playing my Iron Man on Mondays and Tuesdays. That's been a lot of fun, as you can see here. I've been uh, working on that. That's uh, an enjoyable thing for me. Uh, Jake got me started up on that. And uh, I'm working on getting to Dragon Slayer. And uh, I'm oh, pretty that's close. Oh, a fun quest. <laughs> I need to get 38 prayer, I think. That's my main goal. Just head straight down on the Nexus. I can... Can you do that solo? Uh, yeah. Really? It's it's more difficult, but yes, you can. Oh, okay. I thought I it did was... a solo on my Iron Man. I thought it was like so. I thought it was straight up not doable solo. Okay, I'll do it solo. Then. It's yeah. I I did it on my Iron Man. All right, then I will straight up go do that. Then I thought it was just not. I thought you needed a team. All right, cool. Because that's that's no. like. I mean, it's a lot easier with a team. Yeah. It takes longer, but you can do it. That's okay. Okay, cool. Then I will just, go do. Yeah, that. just read uh, read uh, wiki. Yeah. All right. Cool. It'll tell you how to how to do it. As I was um, I was just killing hill giants, which was going nicely. I was you know getting my uh, I needed some combat, uh, but my combat's decent. I'm at fifty seven combat with uh, I have what's my range dad? I mean, I have forty eight range, yeah. forty eight defense. So. God, I remember doing when I first started hill giants to get uh, my prayer up. So yeah, I'm I'm right then, at the uh... beginning here. <laughs> it's 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 a good adventure if you want to watch it. I'm uh, some of it's on RuneScape.video, um, but it's all up on Magebit.tv uh, as well. Uh, I'm trying to get it up on on RuneScape.video as well. It's, I'm just I have to I cut the music out of it so they'll let it be there. Um, so it just takes a little bit longer to get up on to the YouTube channel, but it should all be there eventually. Um, but yeah, that that's been my mo is Monday and Tuesdays live in the morning, uh, for uh, Mage in the morning, which we've been doing a uh, Iron Man series. <clears throat> Probably gonna be doing that for the remainder of this month, and uh, if after Dragon Slayer is up, uh, we want to continue that, we will. If not, I'll I might I might play Eve. I might do something else. Maybe I'll play Planet Side. Who knows? <coughs> we'll see. Um, as far as that goes, yeah, podcast again next Friday, hopefully. And, uh... Should be here. Yeah. Other than that... Actually, next Friday will be the 20th anniversary one, won't it? Tenant? I'd, if I, I'd love it to be the, the 20th. 10th but... <laughs> anniversary Shit, one. Shit, I'd be 41 years old. Um, yeah, 10th <laughs> Shut anniversary. Shut up. Still, you'd still be younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> uh... But uh, yeah, probably on forty nine in a couple of months. Coming up, or next month, month actually. Hey, next month on forty nine. God, yeah. I'm getting old. Next, next Friday, we will definitely we'll do something um larger than just a regular show. Um, we'll do the tenth anniversary stream. So keep out on the look for social media. You can do that by going to Facebook. dot com slash rs weekly or Twitter at rs weekly. Maybe you want to stay in closer contact. You can go to runescape.chat right in your web browser. That'll redirect you to our Discord channel. You can also check us out on our YouTube channel, runescape.video. We'll get you there. Or magebit.tv gets you to our Twitch channel. You can also check us out in-game. Kill, skill, and chill. Kill, skill, the letter N, chill is our clan chat. Or runescape.club on the web. Runescape.expert's going to get you to my rune clan rankings as well. Runeweek.club, runeweek.com rather, is the podcast's website. Runescapeweekly.com gets you to the podcast's uh, show notes that I desperately need to update. Looking for volunteers, if you want to... Uh, get yourself uh, listed as staff there and you want to uh, submit documents to there we need show notes updated there so if you want uh, to be a part of that project looking for volunteers there uh so anyway if you want to help us out let me know uh anyway otherwise you can help us out do uh, you can donate 
or supporting the show, patreon.com slash runescape. We did a wonderful pre-show uh, today. It was a really interesting pre-show, I have to say. <laughs> Bizarre, to say the least. We went into some um, topics. Weird stuff. <laughs> yeah, not normal for the for the pre-show. Um, but that, I, our man brings us into some strange places, I, I have to say. <laughs> he does. Um, but, uh, yeah, so if, you, if you're interested in hearing... Just a, a a general style podcast between the R R man Parnassius and I. You can throw a dollar our my way, really. Let's, let's be honest. Patreon.com slash RuneScape uh, to check that out. Or if you want to do a one time donation, PayPal.me slash RSW. I have a buttload of, pay, of domains being renewed this month. All of those all of those vanity URLs are coming to bite me in the ass. So if you want to uh, help out, uh, you can paypal.me slash rsw. You uh, could really use the help. Magefit.me, if you want to check out my personal projects, tons of poetry are is available for viewing there. Tons of micro blogs. Uh, Lots of stuff there, uh, but the big uh, article is also going to be released there uh, probably next week. So again, bookmark that website. That's where all my cool shit is, me. Anyway, big special thanks to our top Patreon supporters, including Sudwood, Ricky A., and 13 others. Thank you so much. It means the world to me to be able to produce a show. I wouldn't be able to do it if it wasn't for Patreon. I wouldn't be able to do it if it wasn't for shit, like any of this 10 years dude we, holy crap pern can you believe it 10 friggin years dude i know and just want to say a big happy mother's day to any mothers out there be listening to the show yeah happy mother's day i know of at least one who does so yeah big happy mother's day out there and a happy scaping And I didn't mean to make fun of anyone who's uh, English as a second language. I only made <laughs> to make fun of people whose English is a first language and they speak it very badly because we have really good schools here for the most part and you should attend them and use them. <laughs> yeah, it's just learn to write. Spell check is a wonderful tool. Especially like Grammarly. Grammarly is an amazing add-on. Holy crap. <laughs> if you don't know grammar, just install the Grammarly add-on. It'll fix everything for you. <laughs> anyway. I love you all. And I will return next week. Happy scaping. <laughs>